Hey, Anna, how are you doing? Hey, thanks. I'm all right. And you? I'm fine, thank you. So let's start introducing you for those that have, have heard of you. So you are a photographer. Tell, mo tell more. You are from Germany. You live in Finland. And what else? <laughs> well, um, there's not that much about me. Well, I love going on concerts and love photographing those concerts and mostly the metal music is has captured my interest there but yeah basically i'm just a little weird german who found a new home in finland so we have been friends for a while do you remember yeah. how it happened that we met the first time we met on a battle beast show and <laughs> you were photographing there and i was by back then just photographing for fun and not yet like officially but i was a very big battle beast fan so of course i had to go to a show i don't know how many hours away from my home and i think that was it's 16 uh, 17 thousand Maybe it was 2017, yeah, it may be. It was shortly after I moved to Finland, so around yeah. that time. Yeah, you were still an au pair, so yeah, mm -hmm. time go fast. <laughs> oh yeah, it feels like uh, yesterday, yeah. <laughs> almost. Yeah. But let's talk about uh, uh, photographing. So mm -hmm. when did you start? get into photography i was fascinated for it for i don't even remember how long but then i got my first camera when i was 14 or 15 just a tiny small pocket camera and i think from there it gradually just became more and more and really started actually being a thing in my life when did you start to get into concert photography actually already quite early on when i started with photography in general that i also started bringing my camera to the gigs not very successfully um, back then the pictures from there you can barely recognize what band it is but it was a good way for me to feel more comfortable at the shows. So I think the first gig I had a camera with me, still small pocket camera back then, was uh, Rock in Park in Germany in 2010. Hey. There was him and you can't recognize him on my pictures at all. You see a tiny logo that looks like him and then there's some blurry things that I guess are the band. Yeah, I think that the most of us have start like this. If I look to the first photo that I took with a pocket camera, well, they are, I, wa I was so happy because I was, oh, I can see, for me, it was like, I see the band members, but no, <laughs> it's a big no. <laughs> yeah. But you have to start from somewhere and then you step by step, get better and learn how to use and uh, upgrade your gear and so on. But uh, and at some point, the pictures actually become quite good. I yeah. don't know when, but the sun went from the blurry, the shit things, it turned into quite nice pictures. Yeah, it takes time. It's a slow process uh, and uh, I don't know how it happened. It's just you yeah. start to to use your your eyes in a different way, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But so far, how many gigs <laughs> did you uh, took photos of? That's a very good question that I can definitely not answer. Uh, many. I can I last... can relate to you because I. 
I have no idea how many bands I have seen live. Sometimes, uh, you know, before uh, I start uh, taking photos and so on, I had a list of all the bands that I have mm -hmm. seen. Same here. But sometimes, oh, this band. I didn't remember that I saw this band. <laughs> but yeah. And when you are going to photograph a lot, you just can remember. Also with the well, festival, it's just... complex. Yeah, you see so many bands there. And but yeah, generally speaking, I guess I photograph a band every two weeks at least, live yeah. nowadays. Sometimes uh, there's more in a week. I had some weeks where I had four concerts. And then there's some weeks where I don't have any, but like every two weeks sounds about right. Yeah. Do you do this as, as a work or is just a more hobby side? More on the hobby side. I would love to make it a work, but so far I have done almost all my gigs for free and just for getting yeah. the ticket. Yes, yeah, exchange. Same here. <laughs> but I don't have that uh, that good luck with uh, the gigs uh, in in a sense mm -hmm. that uh, living in Pori, there are not many gigs, and uh, yeah. I'm moneyless, so <laughs> I cannot travel that much. So so I'm cut off from a lot of things. But maybe in the future, I will be better with money, so I will be able to. At least once to at month, go outside of Pori to, to take photos at gigs and interviews and so on. But let's see. But mm -hmm. talking about uh, uh, you, <laughs> um, when did you start uh, taking photo for uh, um, Grim Gent? About uh, what? Pretty exactly two years ago, I think now. It was, uh, I met one of the photographers from Kim Gent at Sari Helveti. I think 2021, probably. And was talking there with him about uh, not being that happy at my old magazine anymore. And he invited me that, hey, well, if you need a new one, you can join us. Nice. Looked it up after the festival a bit, and it seemed like a good fit. So joined yeah. them shortly after. And before you were working for a German, for magazine. a German magazine called Music to You. Okay, is still uh, is still up this uh, website? No, well, website. it's still up, but I don't think there's many active photographers anymore nowadays uh, I haven't really seen any updates in a while from them Yeah, which was one of the reasons why I thought I needed a new magazine it just seemed like there wasn't really much of community in the magazine anymore if I needed help I just had to figure things out because well partly because I was the only one in Finland and partly because there were not not many people active anymore. So it was a bit frustrating. Yeah, I see. Um, do you have a favorite band to photograph? Because uh, every one of us has seen uh, certain bands many times and has a band or a few bands that are, oh, I'm happy because I know that the photos are going to be great. Do you have any? Well, I still very strongly love photographing Battle Beast. They have become less much of my favorite band music-wise. I still like them, but I'm not that crazy about them anymore. But I really, really like them live still. Yeah. Because they just have a very good energy on the stage that you know you will get something. And... Oh, there's quite a lot of bands that are really fun to photograph. Why can't I really think of anything right now? Huh. Well, Sabaton was absolutely amazing. I haven't photographed them that often. Actually, only officially once. But 
they treat their photographers so amazingly and they are just, you feel appreciated there, which is not always the case, but with this band, they were absolutely amazing and gave us a lot of time and explained what was going to happen during the show. So it was much easier to photograph and they gave us a general run through of what to expect during each song. And they generally felt really happy about the photographers being there. And of course, also, they have a really cool life set yeah. with the punters and all the special effects and actors on stage and so many flames. Nice. I saw Sabaton once before moving to Finland. And it was, I think it was in Ljubljana, in Slovenia. But I was, I had the camera with me, but I was in the middle of of the of the chair. And uh, well, I'm still alive. I can say it was <laughs> because it was uh, the first band was a band from Hungary, but. I can't remember at the moment the name. They were po power metal, but I can. Then there, there was Eluvetie. Mm -hmm. And when the singer said, all of that, I <laughs> found myself in the middle when people were opening. And then I was, oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. then, so I start to go. Then everybody start, of course, all of that, start running. And I just grabbed the first guy in front of me that, I didn't know. I was if I'm going to hell, someone is coming with me. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't felt I help another girl to stand up. Since I'm I'm small, the the risk to to get some trample to death is a bit yeah. higher to have some nose bleeding or a black eye. It's not. It's not my. I was like protecting my camera also, so that was mm -hmm. like a big thing. <laughs> but yeah, I I remember it was maybe at the time they had not that big things going on on the on the stage, mm -hmm. so it was it was a bit different. But I would really like to see them live and photograph and also interview them. But let's see. I keep my fingers crossed for you. It's definitely <laughs> worth doing so. Um, talking about uh, photography, you studied at some point photography. Did you finish it? Or uh, do you have still uh, this well, stuff going on? I'm... There was one one-year course that I finished, but then there's also another one where you officially get a title as a photographer and that is still not finished. I'm not sure when or if I actually ever managed to finish it. Yeah, a bit of a long ongoing story there. Yeah. Do you think that uh, to be a concert photographer, you need a degree as photographer? What's What's your point of view on on this i think it's helpful to learn the same things that you would learn as a proper photographer but um in the scene to get a name it doesn't really matter if you have a paper that says yeah you're officially a licensed photographer that you either make a name for yourself through connections or by being good or somehow or you won't and there's probably no difference there if you have a paper yeah saying something about you or not um i don't think that in the concert photography scene it really makes much of a difference from that point of view of course the things you learn like how you what settings to use for example they are helpful for you to get better pictures and therefore you will also have it easier of getting a name for yourself if you take better pictures. But otherwise, not really that important there. 
there is any photographer, concert photographer that you look up to? Oh, there's a lot that I look up to. I still don't really feel that confident about my own pictures and always are astonished about, oh, well, they actually look good. Most of the time, I just look at other people's pictures being like, oh, if my pictures were like this. But, well, I guess if I would name one specifically, I guess Jakob Manninen. Yeah. I, especially prominent was uh, one time when we both photographed on the same festival and at one of the gigs he was standing next to me and then he published a picture from the time when he was standing next to me. And, well, there was a big difference between my picture and his. Mine was fine nothing bad about it but while well, it was just a fine picture and his was really cool and I would wish that I could still bring my skill to the same level because yeah With we time. have both the same probably yeah yeah he you know, does it I also have this uh, this problem it's normal to be critical towards our work and uh, because otherwise you are not going to uh, evolve, improve. Uh, it's uh, it's always like uh, when you look the picture. Sometimes you take the photos, then you look right after on the on the screen on the camera, and you are like, oh, this one is nice. Then you go to the computer, and mm -hmm. ah, it's not that nice. And then uh, maybe there is a photo that it's you are like, oh, this is so good, this is so good. Then the day after is like. Uh, no, it's not. It's not that great. It's okay, but and then there is uh, the photos that you like for a year, and then it's over. That that I don't know the the feeling, and you look at it. It's it's okay, -ish, but it could be better. There is not that wow factor, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, but yeah. Uh, do you prefer to? take photos during festivals or uh, club gigs? I do like the photos on festival because I love the daylight. It makes, I like it better in daylight, but I wouldn't want to do too many festivals. It just gets so exhausting after a couple bands. As much as I love shooting outdoors, the festivals, when you have 10 bands a day or even more, it's fun for a weekend, but not too many. In the long run there, I like my concerts with two, maybe three bands, and then I'm done and can go to rest. And Yeah. How many photos do you take, take during a festival? A weekend festival, for example? <laughs> Far too many. <clears throat> uh, this year, I guess, on I had one festival only with and I think it were 23 bands and I had 2,000, 2,200 pictures, something like that. Yeah. I I try to be, to be, let's say, good in, in a sense that I don't have then to spend too much time on the computer after that. So I try to not take too many, but Sometimes it if it's difficult, in particular if there is a band that many things are happening on the stage. Mm -hmm. So you are just like excited and just it happened to take so many and you don't need at the end when you go you publish something on the on a magazine website, you need just a certain amount and then it's so hard to choose. Yeah. <laughs> which one I'm going to put now. But yeah, I I had the one, just one festival, Poris Pere. I wish I had Tusca, but they didn't accredit giving. Gi they didn't give accreditation. And okay, I'm not talking about that, but <laughs> yeah. Um, so during the those three days festival, I ended up with uh, an uh, yeah. Let me think how many it was. One thousand two hundred photos, but there were not just band band members uh, things. The, there were also inside uh, all those 
festival people. I like to take mm-hmm. photos of people in particular where when they are just into the music, they cannot see that I'm taking the photos. Otherwise, yeah. they, they are like, oh, no, no. Or they are pausing. That is fine. But sometimes it is... The, there are really beautiful moments and I really enjoy mm. them. Do you like to take photos of people uh, on the the fans on the show? Of the Sometimes, yeah. But I always feel a bit uh, worried that should I really take pictures? I wouldn't be too happy if somebody just took a picture of me and posted online. Maybe the other person doesn't like it either. Should I really do that? Maybe it's because we have gotten explained in photography school so often that yes, you shouldn't take picture of somebody without their permission. I agree with you. It looks nice when they don't know that I photographed them, but then I feel worried that should I, without having the actual permission of the... But it's uh, in a concert festival situation, uh, it's allowed to take photos. Yeah. The, the reason still is... it makes me always feel a bit uneasy that's why I don't usually photograph that many yeah it's a difficult um, difficult topic this to talk but I think that we uh, I'm because this metal pizza is going now it's just those uh, two people but I'm going to also do some where, where there are more people and we are talking about mm-hmm. the topic so this may be one of the topics about yeah yeah great great thank you <laughs> you're very welcome <laughs> uh what are the most difficult things in uh, concert photography oh the lights change very fast which makes it very hard to have the correct settings because well how do you set settings for light that it switches from black to white in just a blink of an eye. And then there's some bands that just use so much smoke. It Ooh. drives me nuts. I mean, it can look cool in moderate amounts, but when the whole stage is just covered in gray, foggy... How am I supposed to get a nice, sharp, interesting-looking picture? And... Well, then on if it's a small show, you kind of have to still fight for your spot that you can actually get a good picture when you're in the middle of the crowd. Mm. And then you always have to be worried about the camera and just be like, okay, now I guess one and back here with the camera. Yeah. And then sometimes it's just so hot and sweaty in the venues that... Well, it just gets to you and to the camera. My one camera starts falling into pieces by now because it has been in so hot, moist conditions that all the glued parts are starting to fall off. I actually, that happened with uh, the Super Zoom, the Nikon Super Zoom that uh, mm-hmm. I, had, I still have, but I'm not using that much actually. So I just tape and uh, I don't know, it's a disaster, but... <laughs> yep. My older of my two more professional cameras has started doing the same thing. All those little things are just peeling off and either they're missing or then they're glued onto the camera again with tape and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I feel this pain, yeah. Uh, Do you take also um, a a promo shoot of bands? I would if any band would book me. So far, I have done two promo shoots for the same band, but the first time it was just didn't. Um, Children of the Frost, a very small symphonic metal band where a friend of mine plays in. The first time, unfortunately, we didn't get to use the pictures because then they had some problem with the drummer and the drummer left week after the promo shoot I think so yep so much work and well they saw the pictures but other than that they never were used for anything and now last Christmas I took new ones for them and I'm very happy whenever I see 
them blob up in some advertisement yeah. for one of their shows like oh, this is my picture oh it looks so cool yeah it's always uh really great emotion to see your picture used also uh, when someone from a band uh, share a photo you took during a gig mm-hmm. and, yes or they write you an email hey can i use a photo or those things is it's it's really nice so you think you you know that you did something good mm-hmm. yeah it makes you feel very appreciated and happy yeah. and uh, it's so good feeling Tell me, what gear are you using right now? I use, um, as a backup, my old Nikon D5500 with some Sigma zoom lens and then a Nikon D7500 with a very very old Nikon yeah. zoom lens that is quite good, very heavy. I could probably murder someone with it, <laughs> but <laughs> it was cheap. Um, the new ones with the same kind of zoom and quality would be far out of my price range. So I brought a very old used one that's still made out of metal. Yeah. So it's yeah. so it's raining when you are. Uh... When you are uh, taking photos. Uh, yeah, after a festival, I will have muscle ache in here for holding the camera up. Yeah. <laughs> but then other than that, it definitely does the job and it was several hundred euros cheaper. So yeah. it's a compromise I'm willing to take. Yeah. but And at least I don't need to be so worried about it because... Now that it's metal, even if it gets a little push in the crowd or something, it won't break that easily than the newer plastic things. I think the person will hurt themselves more than my camera if they accidentally hit it. I think so. (laughs) But let's talk about metal music. How did you get into metal music? Mm, I... First, well, I was listening to some rock quite early on after I saw the Rasmus and him on back then, I think MTV or something. Yeah. And saw some music videos there. And uh, at some point, my dad had the idea that uh, he could gain some coolness points by there was some metal festival happening right in his village and he thought he would be cooler if he invites me to go there with him even though I wasn't listening to metal back then and well it was summer breeze open air that at least in, I think most people will have heard of it yeah and back then I found quite a lot of my current favorite bands already like Amorphis was uh, something I heard there for the very first time. I think I found Sabaton through that. And yeah, quite a lot of bands that I still like a lot. Either were playing there that year or I found them through checking what similar bands would be. And that's how that all somehow started. And my dad is quite annoyed by it because... (laughs) He does not like me listening to metal and all this horrible music. Horrible, wow. really horrible. Not my fault. You <laughs> took me there. Uh, what's your favorite band? Do you have one? I definitely have one. And uh, currently it's Brumio. Yeah. Uh, well, to the people knowing me, that's not a big surprise, probably. Yeah, yeah, I knew, but I had to ask. Yeah, of course. <laughs> What's your favorite metal album? It's That's a lot more difficult. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. 
I don't really have an answer on at the top of my head for that one. There's there are many probably that are really really on the top. Yeah. And then also I love to just binge listen to the same album over and over again for a while and then move on to the next and just binge listen that for a while. Yeah. So it quite often changes what I think is my favorite. Yeah. And which one is the best gig that you have ever seen? I guess I would have to go with Catatonia back in Yuansu. It was maybe not like the most important aggressive gig because it's a small venue but it was so emotional that that absolutely made up for the lack of super high special effects or anything it was very close because i mean there's like this much space between yeah. the stage and the front row and the stage is also very low so you basically just at eye height with the band and it was very very emotional gig somehow it was the first time I even heard of the band I just right. well you and Sue's a small city there was a metal show I figured well why not go there even though yeah. I don't know the band but it really blew me away very fast yeah nice so let's go to the question because there is a question on Facebook from mm -hmm. Lenka Pavlova. And uh, the question is, if the boys from Brymir were to come over for lunch and you weren't allowed to cook them pizza, what other food would you prepare for them? And then she wrote also, I really like your pictures and thank you very much for all of them. Well, first of all, of course, thank you to her for loving my pictures. But yeah, to answer the question, <laughs> well, I'm a pretty bad cook, so I would probably first somehow try to suggest something that we could cook together and then let, like, Victor seems to be quite good at, good at cooking, so the singer of Premiere, so I would probably try to kind of trick him into doing all the difficult <laughs> stuff. But if I really would need to cook myself, I would make something very easy that you basically can't mess up like mm, toast Hawaii or pizza toasts or something that you just put yeah. toast bread and then put some topics and put it in the oven and something easy <laughs> yeah because I would like them to survive my cooking skills and I'm not <laughs> sure they would but let's go to the random topic jar mm -hmm. and let's All see right. what you are going to get it's open and let's take let's see what we are going to get for you and the first one is uh, makeup so are you good with makeup mm, i would say no but then every now and then i surprisingly for me and everyone around me managed to pull up uh pull off very cool and quite so good makeup inspiration to get yeah yeah i feel the same <laughs> most of the time as you can see now uh, well i don't wear any makeup or well some eyelash color and that's it because yeah it just doesn't work for me if i do makeup it will be if i have an inspiration and it will be usually not something i can wear in a normal everyday setup yeah. it will be some over the top thing yeah what do you think about makeup in metal music I think it can be a really cool thing but sometimes it's just a bit too much like there are some people that I think look very beautiful already on their own and then they just blasted the whole face with makeup and it's kind of look but 
I would prefer less. Yeah. Yeah. But then it depends on the what they want to express with their mm -hmm. look on the stage. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about uh, makeup and the theater. In the theater, everything is over the top when you put makeup. You need just to get there because otherwise people cannot see and then it works mm -hmm. well with the lights. Also, I have never been on a TV show, but for I have read uh, interviews and articles about that. And in the TV, they put a lot of things on because of the light. So their skin look like flawless and all those things. Uh, and uh, with the light, everything look better. But if you see in a normal situation with the light, yeah. those people, you were like, what the hell? <laughs> because it's not something for every day. So, yeah. And I also, in my everyday life, when I go to work, just a bit of mascara and that's it. <laughs> because I do, for the work that I do, I don't need makeup. I it's it's useless but sometimes during the weekend uh, i try also during for those interviews to put something on just not to be <laughs> to be a zombie <laughs> but yeah. yeah but i i like you have those inspirational moments and then those i call them art attack but mm. art, art and attack <laughs> So I have this moment that I have to 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 express myself with color and everything, so or with black, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> and then they oh, they come out color or... too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then they came up really nice. But if I have to redo the same makeup, I'm not able. <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> uh, let's speak another. All right. Topic from the chart. This one. Games. Are you into games? Some. Well, depends on the game, obviously. But yeah, I can get quite lost in some games. I what started playing games? the well, one that I basically binge played um, from start to finish where the Zero Dawn and Horizon game and or games I really love their main character and they were very nicely done and I just couldn't stop at all okay do and you play on the computer or on console? the PlayStation mostly yeah. I have never figured out the, the how it works to play on a computer. I think I'm quite all right gamer on the PlayStation, but give me a computer and I absolutely suck. I'm just so horribly bad on a computer. It never goes anywhere where I want it to go. I try to go straight and it jumps backwards or something. I don't get it on a computer. <laughs> but on the PlayStation, I really like it that just somehow feels nicer for me. And I also really like some broad games, but then you always need people and that I like less. Yeah. What broad game you like? Well, I'm not sure if I, that's really a broad game. I do enjoy Cards Against Humanity. Oh, when I love that. Crowd. Yes. It can be so fun. And... But you need to be a mean person. <laughs> no, well, not that's me. not a problem. <laughs> I, I am a generally nice person, but I can be very mean if I want to. And yeah, Think... or a pervert, oh. you need to be also. Oh. Yeah, that helps too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it wouldn't be a game I would play with everyone. Uh, some people, I feel like. I don't want to show them just quite how dark my humor <laughs> might be. But if someone has uh, no dark humor, that person cannot play Cards Against Humanity. Yeah. 
Do you own the cards against humanity? Well, technically my boyfriend has it and not me, but we live together, so... Yeah. I still have to buy that. Uh, because I play Actually, with my friends. You are able, as far as I know, to download it for free and then just print it yourself. They do offer you the game completely legally for free, as long as you print it. Okay. On their own website. I didn't know. I didn't know At least that. until a couple of years ago, that was an option. That you could but, uh, legally really, download I would it like to have the packaging and all the. Yeah extended versions uh, just to, mm. to make more uh, spicy and uh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, at some point we have uh, we have to, Absolutely. if we're coming to Tampere or if you are coming here, we have to to play. That's, that's, that's a plan. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. There is any game that you don't like. Any game that's trying to be educational. I don't mind things educating me, but I hate when they're being put it in a game. Then I just feel like they're trying to trick me into educating me, and I just can't stand it. So you are not into uh, trivia, tri trivial pursuit? It's okay. Not my greatest uh, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it's okay. I don't feel like they hiding at least what they're doing. Yeah. When I was young, sometimes my godmother would gift me games, and it took about five seconds to figure out what the actual purpose of the game is to improve math skills or spelling skills, and ugh. yeah. You could give me the best game in the world if I feel like it's just trying to teach me how to write a word. No thanks. Put it away. What do you think about Uno? I think it can destroy friendships, but other than that, it's quite fun. I So I have those the Uno deck that I bought for more than 20 years ago. So mm -hmm. this, those cards have seen many people getting mad with each other, and it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't get me wrong. It's, it's a game. I love that game, but I'm when it's a, I'm kind of competitive. Not always, but I with those games I become competitive and I try to win and I have my strategy even if it's more you are lucky or not to get a certain card but if you use strategy then you you have more chance to to win mm -hmm. and uh, yeah we you know there is the plus two and plus four but uh, we in Italy we use also those uh, those cards that are uh, used to separate the different color that are uh, without nothing. There is just the uno on the back, but there is they yeah. are white, and we use them as uh, plus ten. <laughs> so there were a lot of cards, and the game was like uh, never ending. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was um, during the summer on the beach, you know, and then after it was, okay, now let's go in on the water to swim because we were like, it was the only uh, time when I was able to sit under the sun. Otherwise, I was somewhere swimming or going to eat something. So it was the only time that I was able to stay still, <laughs> almost still. <laughs> But yeah, I, I know that many people think like Uno is, they, they are like when I get the card, no, <laughs> they hate me. I can understand the point of view, but it's still fun. You just need yeah. to have a little bit of um tougher skin for that game, I guess. So. Yeah, but there are worst games when you get mad. There is the oh yeah. What is Kimball? What's the name? 
the one that uh, you start uh, and you have to reach uh, your station. But if someone mm -hmm. came on, you know, on your same uh, point, they eat you and you start from the beginning and you have to get the six on the... on the Yeah, to get out of the yeah. home. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure what's the English name of it. In Germany, we call it Mensch ärger dich nicht. Um, like, don't be mad, human. And in Italy, it's non ti arrabbiare. Don't, don't get hungry. <laughs> so it makes sense that every, every time someone gets mad. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. But let's talk of something more, more tasty. Pizza. Do you like pizza? Mm -hmm. I love pizza. Great food. Yeah, what's your favorite pizza? Tuna and red onion. Okay, so you go for stronger, strong taste there. I guess, yeah. Sometimes if I feel really um, like putting something more extra, I still put feta cheese. More strong taste. Yeah. <laughs> You like the strong taste, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Where did you eat the best pizza? Hmm. Well, there's one Italian food place in Finland that has really, really good pizza. It's in Lahti and called Mamma Maria. Hey, I know of that. I've never been there, but I have heard of that. It's very good, although I most of the time end up eating pasta there because, well, nowadays, now that I live in Finland, there's not that many places that offer me good pasta dishes. Oh. Good pizza, most places, or many places, manage. Not outstanding, but good. So a pizza I can get quite often and easily, but pasta, not so much. So if I'm in Lahti, I will most likely be at Mamma Maria and eat pasta there. And well, we used to have quite a few very good Italian restaurants also near my old home in Germany, where there were very good pizzas. I'm pretty sure the people that made the pizza actually were from Italy and Well, that always helps because Italians just know better how to make pizza than yeah. other people. It just is a nice fluffy and crunchy <laughs> at the same time. Do you know, now it came in my mind that the last time that you were here, before you were leaving, we went to eat pizza. We went in mm -hmm. Pizzeria Dante in Bori. Yep. When, when you were here? It was last year? Last year? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. somewhere last year. It was maybe se September. Yeah. Around that time? Or late August. It's almost one year. Yeah. And then we took the, the, the photos in the in the food. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Still, I like those photos. Me too. <laughs> I still have one of the photos as a profile picture. At least yeah, I know. <laughs> the Harry Potter dance. <laughs> oh, well, I always wanted to be a Harry Potter character since I was young and I grew up with these books. So it always fascinated me and I always dreamed of being part of it. So at least for one picture, being able to be okay. part of it was very nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you are happy with that. <laughs> But uh, let's talk about the most important thing. This is the question. The one that everyone is waiting to know. Pineapple on pizza. Yes or no? Sometimes. Sometimes. So you are on yes. More. Yes. I think it can be nice. I just don't want it all the time. Yeah. So you are the second one that gave the vote on the yes. <laughs> Everybody yes. else was like, no, no, it's a big no. I, I always say, for me, it's a no, but I always say, if it's not on my pizza, it's fine. <laughs> Because every, everyone has its own taste, but it's, uh, it's nice to know. I want to create a table and put uh, 
the, the acts and see what people in the metal world think about people on pizza. But do you know the, the band uh, Samurai Pizza Cat? It's a German band. No, but it sounds very interesting. It's a metalcore band and uh, they did a song uh, with the singer of uh, Electric Cold Boy. Mm -hmm. And the song name is Pizza Homicide. And uh, yeah, you, you have to watch the video and uh, it will make a lot of sense. I think that I have to contact them to have someone of the band to do this Metal Pizza interview because they have that song. They have the pizza in the name. So it has to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it just seems logical, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> But yeah, we are at the end. I want just to remember to people that uh, watch or listen to all the other episodes because there are a lot of interesting things. And if you want someone in particular to be guest in Metal Pizza, please write in the comments and I will try to get in touch with them and make it happen. And if you have, remember to follow on Instagram, Facebook, and if you have question for uh, my guest, please write whatever you you want. It's it's free. You don't have you don't have to think too much. It's it's not about only metal. Whatever it came to your mind. But Anna, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to talk with you and uh, to exchange all those funny stories <laughs> and uh, talking about those uh, concert photos. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Then thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah. And uh, let's do it again uh, at some time. Sure. Maybe you, you can be guest uh, also when there are more photographers to talk about different mm -hmm. topics, if you want. That sounds fun. If, yeah. Great. Let me know if something's happening there. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.